From In the Beginning to the Musical Apocalypse, this is The Bible Says What. I'm your host, Mike Wiseman. The best ways to communicate with someone are by telephone, email, showing up to their house, or sending a birthday card through the snail mail system. These are effective ways to get a hold of someone in our world. In the world of the Christian deity, however, these things are just too easy. Yahweh apparently wants you to be utterly confused and second-guess his messages and messengers. What if I told you that I thought the best way to communicate with you was to strip naked and run around making animal noises? You'd probably rather I send an email. But according to Micah chapter 1, the all-knowing, all-powerful Christian deity thought it would be a great idea to send a lunatic with a message. Bad ways to communicate with someone. Sending one of your biggest fans to run around naked, screaming like a wild animal, warning people of your impending doom. It sounds like lunacy. The ways the Christian deity chooses to communicate do not make sense. I'm hoping that if one day I go around screaming like a wild animal while nude, someone will get me the help I so clearly need and not take my outbursts as gospel. Let's start the show. Is there anything in the Bible that you yourself have an issue with? <laughs> Okay, so it took you reading the Bible to realize that those things were bad for you? Yeah, it actually did. I, I didn't figure I, this out on your own? No, Ted, Ted Bundy could be redeemed. God doesn't kill children. Does, what, what do you think the Passover was? Yahweh sets up a whole system in the Old Testament where you slaughter animals just so he's able to forgive you. Uh, how do I start my show? Uh, today's special guest. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> what day is it? <laughs> this is going to be a good episode, Michael. <laughs> You're in for a yeah. treat. <laughs> <laughs> Today's special guest is returning guest and Christian podcaster, Paul Granger. Welcome back, Paul. Hey, it's good to be back, Michael. This is number three on your show. Yes. You were on my show, so this is our fourth conversation. And I don't know what we're counting as the fifth one, either fifth on your show or fifth together, but that's our special one. I won't say yeah. what it is. Your guests need mm. to go back to our last conversation for that little Easter egg. Maybe live? What was it? Oh, oh, God. oh you don't remember. remember. You got to go back remember. to the last episode. <laughs> so much has happened. Well, I'll, it's been I'll, a while. I'll give the spoiler. It was our mm. live from skydiving. Ah, that was it. That was it. Nice. Yeah. yeah. No, um, uh, that's still on the books. We'll, we'll get still there on the books. eventually. It's going to happen, yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's anyway, so Paul, you you have a podcast. Let's mm -hmm. let's remind the folks at home a little bit about what you do before we jump into our special episode today. Yeah, yeah. So I do a podcast, but really, uh, the bulk of my life right now is as uh, uh, I've shared before, and can sound mm -hmm. weird even to Christians. Is uh, is I'm an ambassador of Christ, and what that really means is in my everyday life, whether it's functional things, uh, official things, and everything in between, organic sitting on a porch, hosting a podcast. I'm striving to live out what it actually means to follow Christ and to represent him well. So mm -hmm. I serve with ministries. Uh, I do organic, interactional things in the neighborhood. Uh, and as you mentioned, I do a podcast mm -hmm. called Where Did You See God? Where really it's about, it's not even about a podcast. It's about cultivating space, authentic, accessible space to process these hard questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that we're going to do. We're going to jump in today. It's a little bit in. of a special episode. We're going to do a little Bible study. Uh, Paul has picked Micah 6 through 7, uh, but we're going to start off on number one because I think there's some fun context in there. <laughs> yes. So I hope you brought your Bible today. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be reading out of my old faithful here. Mm -hmm. um, NIV, but it's a little bit different than other NIVs. So... Bear with me here. But I did want to start off on one. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh, I am as ready as I can be at 10 p.m. at night. Let's <laughs> roll, Micah. Let's do this. So for a little bit of context, Micah is a prophet. Um, he's warning of God's judgment against Israel and Samaria. Samaria. Do, do you agree? Yes. Yes. All right. Well, so far. That's, oh, oh. Yeah, yes, and. I love so it. it. We're it. disagreeing already. <laughs> <laughs> Not even disagreeing. Uh, it's a combination. When you look hmm. throughout Micah, part of it is talking about this is what you've been doing. 
Hmm. And this is what the result of that will be. And then Hmm. there are promises of restoration, uh, promises of forgiveness. So you get the mix of these throughout the book. It bounces back and forth. Now, Hmm. one thing I know you're excited about is there's a whole lot of that first part of it. And it (laughs) sounds rough. Well, yeah, no, for sure. (laughs) Um, I, I do like that it bounces back and forth. Uh, description of it that's that's good uh, exactly what happens a lot in Micah um, mm-hmm. but how it starts off with is Micah does have the dream um, or the vision sorry and of the word of the Lord came to him mm-hmm. so as far as what that's telling us do you agree that this is a word from the Lord like Micah yeah I mean the, the very here. first verse says the word of the Lord that came yeah. to Micah Morsheth in the days of Jotham Ahaz and Hezekiah kings of Judah which he saw concerning Samaria and Jude, Jerusalem. There you go. Mm-hmm. Hear, O people, all of you, listen, O earth, and all who are in it, that the sovereign Lord may witness against you the Lord from his holy temple. I like that one. So God's in his holy temple. What does God's holy temple look like? <laughs> and why does God have a holy temple? And who built it? Well, one all thing you'll questions. find is there's a lot of figurative, decorative language. It's like anything we read, the mm-hmm. way that language works, sometimes it is uh, it is as it is written. There's this thing, for example, when Jesus or when Jesus, this is the 10 PM talking, I'm going to warm up. And then everything this, I say is going to be fantastic. Yeah. When, I'm going to warm up and it's going to get worse. So just so you're ahead. <laughs> so, good, Michael. so when God uh, was giving, uh, descriptions of how to build the temple, mm. uh, the physical temple, that was very specific. A lot of times when you hear about A temple here, it's not that there is a physical brick and mortar building that's floating on a cloud, but it's more Uh of the, um, and what's the word I'm looking for, Uh, representative of, man, 10 Yes. What's the word I'm looking for, Michael? It's like not figurative, but um, Uh, uh, audience, type it in the comments and... (laughs) That's for our skydiving episode. (laughs) No. Uh, So yeah. So okay. So it's not. It's not a real temple. It's not a real thing made out of clouds and 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 gold. Yeah. Yeah. My kids were watching the the Super Mario movie, and you have Bowser's, you know, temple floating up his whole thing. It's not not like that. You're not going to see God's temple suddenly pass by like an airplane. They're singing peaches, 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 peaches. peaches." (laughs) The kids love that song. Oh, Jack Black is is awesome. Yeah. Um, judgments against uh, Samaria and Jerusalem. That's uh, chapter one, verse three. Look, the Lord is coming from his dwelling place. He comes down and treads the high places of the earth. The mountains melt beneath him and the valleys split apart like wax before the mm-hmm. fire, like water rushing down a slope. So why does that do that when God walks by? That's so weird. Why can't God just like walk over the mountains or around the river? He's got to like, no, everything splits. Yeah, there's That's another weird. one. It's, uh, I want to say it's like Psalm 17 or 18. And it's the same kind of thing. It talks about God thunder and he came down. And it's like, <laughs> it is like this, this powerful, like storm deity. Kind intense of thing. Yeah. storm. Yeah. 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 So verse, verse one, three are there. Uh, what was it? Uh, look, the Lord is coming down from his high place. So God can leave his temple. And when God leaves his temple, it's not usually for a good thing. Watch yeah, so out. again, we, yeah, we're getting this figurative picture, right? So it's not really a temple. God of the universe. Yeah, it's not like you'll see this big being yeah. suddenly step out of this floating temple and then stomp and the mountains are crumbling apart. It's a flowery language isn't the word I'm looking for. There's a word. It's going to, by know, the end it's, of the episode, it's going to pop yeah. up. But it, it is representative, right? It evokes, yeah. you know, because a lot of what they're trying to capture is that this isn't Fluff. some small time person. This isn't just your run of the mill king. This isn't even your most powerful king. No yeah. king could like step out of his temple and suddenly the earth starts crumbling and melting like wax. So who is this being that evokes this level of intensity? Because if you yeah. and I were just hanging out after skydiving, sitting by the mountain and suddenly <laughs> it starts melting like wax, like we're going to have some feelings about that. I would believe so. Be I've been afraid. running the opposite run. way. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Paul, move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. Um, that's some crazy. That's for mm-hmm. sure. Like, well, then why would he do that? Why would he come down and crack the mountains? I don't yeah. know. That's a whole other thing. Well, I mean, and we get into be. it. Yeah. You know? he's, I, I, that's the thing, too, is he's coming down, cracking the mountains. He's splitting all that. It, it, he does like to show off his powers. And I think that's kind of a little bit right there, showing off a power there. 
and so let's see, we've get when we get into it. Uh, so therefore I will make Samaria heap in the open mm. country, a place for planting vineyards. I will pour down her stones into the valley and uncover her foundation. All her carved images shall be beaten to pieces. All her wages shall be burned with fire. All her idols I will lay to waste for from the fee uh, of a prostitute, she gathered them into the fee of a prostitute. They shall return. Bum, and it keeps bum, on going, bum. right? This intense, like yeah. they will, uh, for this, I will lament. Oh, this is, uh, so here's the interesting thing about Micah. This is the good part. He jumps back and forth between him speaking uh -huh. and God speaking. Yes. So he'll say, this is what God's saying. And then he'll give kind of a commentary. He says, yes. for this, I lament and wail. I will go stripped and naked. So this is Mike. I mean, God's not is going it, Yeah, I was going to say, is God going right. to go stripped and naked <laughs> right. in this part? Because this is, this is my favorite part right here. Yeah. I don't know about so, you. So this is Micah. Like he's, I mean, a lot of times when a prophet would receive a word from God, at least in scripture, when it talks about it, it, sometimes it would hit them just as hard as it might hit the people hearing it, if not harder, for two reasons. One, hmm. it's intense. Like what God is saying is intense. And <sighs> two, they're the ones that are being invited to share it and they know others will not like it. So he's hearing God say, look, so is that why he stripped naked? So yeah, I will <laughs> lament and well, I go and strip naked. It's, it's an interesting cultural thing that we don't do anymore. It's like the sackcloth. It will continue ashes, on, like, Paul. It gets better. Things. It gets uh, I will make lamentation like the jackals and mourning like the ostriches for her yes. wound is incurable. And it yes. has come to Judah and it has reached <laughs> to the gate of my people to Jerusalem. My verse, uh, my Bible says, uh, because of oh, yeah, this, so I'm I on ESV for the people listening. Oh, I'm yes, ESV. You. You're NIV you. with a twist or something. You yeah. said there's something special. About yeah, I don't understand it. Like it just doesn't match up with all the NIVs. There's like uh, some yeah. differences. I don't. Okay. I got it from a, a hotel room, so who knows? Gotcha. Well, you know, you know those hotel Bibles. They got a little something extra special. I, <laughs> <laughs> that they do, man. That they. Do. I just uh, lost Micah. Oh, that uh, is awesome. Good job, man. All right, back to. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite part because uh i will go out here he goes i will go about barefoot and naked i will howl like a jackal and moan like an owl that is an interesting can you like yeah. i don't know how that sounds how would that sound what does I, an I owl don't even know. moaning it's sound interesting like? like yours is moan like an owl mine is mourning like the ostriches really that's, i'd say yeah that's, that's a, a big <laughs> and i don't know difference. i mean i know what an owl sounds like i don't know what an ostrich sounds like but for a yeah. human to be mourning or moaning like that. I mean, it's unnatural, right? And I think and that's naked, the thing. It's like, around. it's like, a, I can't think of a movie that shows this, but you know, think of a movie where the person has just experienced something horrendous and they mm. just like, they don't cry or they don't, yeah. they just like make this kind of a sound. The new Godzilla. Like, Did you see the new Godzilla? A Godzilla minus one? Yes. yes. Oh, yes. when he's in the, oh it's like, he's like, Rah. Yeah, that, yes. that scene where I go to right there. Yeah, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Which is a, Great it's a fantastic movie. Man, fantastic. Yeah. Super yes. good. But that's not what we're here to talk about. No. Episode four <laughs> with each other. We'll <laughs> take a break from the Bible. God tell us. We'll geek what. out about that later. <laughs> <laughs> but Godzilla does come down and cause uh, destruction. So, he does. You know, we can get some good some does. stuff there. <laughs> um, now, here's what's interesting. Um, hmm. You know, you were, so one, hmm. we are hitting this, like, it hits out the gate. God's like, hmm. What you're doing cannot stand anymore. It is mm. infecting everything like an uncurable plague. He's so and upset. I am coming down to deal with it. And, and then so Micah like is wondering. mourning the disaster and Micah is from mourning the Lord. hearing it. And there's, there's weeping. Uh, and you can start to wonder like, well, what in the world have they done? And we get one yeah. bit of a hint here where it's mm. referencing the idols. Mm. Uh, so here is a people that have chosen, all right, there's, there's the the god that mike is talking about hmm. but also there's these other gods that we can hmm. forge and form and that's where that's what we're going to choose we're going to choose these other gods these other forms and are, this is going to be our deity and are, he's are basically they real gods do, do you think that those gods are real gods like like minor gods or something or like or what do you, how, how do those work yeah and i know in i've heard a few conversations on your show where that's come up and i know different believers say different things hmm. you know Scripture, and I think in one of our conversations, we talked about, um, you know, God saying, I am uh, the Lord, your God, I am one. But then mm -hmm. there are other moments where Paul, uh, the Apostle Paul goes to Athens, and he's talking to a group of philosophers who not don't just believe in one God, they believe in many gods, and they have mm -hmm. these statues up to them. And one of them is the unknown God. And the Apostle Paul's like, well, I know who that one is. Let me tell you about that one. <laughs> 
Um, you know, I think when I, here's what I tend to think, especially in like our culture, mm -hmm. uh, in American culture, there isn't a lot of talk about other gods. And so it was easy for me as a child to read these things about idols and say, well, that was a Old Testament problem. Like, yeah. I, mean, I don't know. I don't know a single person in my neighborhood that I've interacted with that has an idol <laughs> sitting up somewhere or that's like we worship something ball. out of Goldenwood. Yeah, they got an Asherah pole in their yard. Yeah. Like, I don't know anybody. <laughs> but I got two, actually, you know, one of the front <laughs> and the back. Nice, nice, fantastic. <laughs> uh, but there are def there's definitely idolization. And there are definitely things that people have made idols in their life. And I would mm. dare say are serving as though they are their God. Now they wouldn't say like these things are my God. So one idol, for example, is money for a lot of people. Money right. is an idol. Um, I don't know a single person that says money is my God. There may be some no. songs that say that. Well, well, but, you know, they will. <laughs> but if we think of what does it look like, what does a relationship mm. with a God look like? It is a basically That's a submission a to and it's a submission to it. It's a reliance on it. It's a devotion to it, whatever that entity is. And so here we have a people that had been invited to be in relationship with the God. And by the way, uh, uh, I'm really curious how this uh, conversation is going to go, because I've, I'm curious what makes a Bible study different than our other conversations. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I would say, and here's, here's what I would say, and I like this, and I don't know if mm. you'll like this, <laughs> but when you're reading a book, and you're doing a book study. Uh, part of navigating that is, uh, and this is something that came up in our last episode, this suspension of disbelief, right? Even if we don't mm -hmm. believe something, we enter the context of the book and say, well, if this is the world of the book, how can I understand what's being written within that realm? So to give yeah. an example, if you and I were doing a book study on the Lord of the Rings, huh. it wouldn't make much sense for me to go, well, you know, none of this stuff makes sense because wizards aren't real so this gandalf guy doesn't can't this doesn't make yeah. any sense right no or or if gandalf was good like why didn't he just send the eagles from the start or if gandalf was powerful why didn't he just you know do something with his fingers and mm. right so this will be the interesting thing because in this context uh you know the premise of your show yeah. is you don't believe that this god exists right? no. it's like and you definitely don't believe that he is loving, which when we get to seven, yeah. that's part of what's claimed about him. But yeah. in the context of this, yeah. Micah 100% believes that God is real and that God is mm -hmm. loving. I mean, he and that he's bringing the disaster and that he is bringing the disaster that he is showing his wrath. And yeah. uh, there is indication in here that others believe that he existed, but didn't want to choose him. The Egyptians. Uh, it's in here as well. Yeah. Well, and but even. But even like if we jump ahead, uh, well, we won't. It's somewhere here. I have to scroll. We'll get through. there. I'm, we'll I'm get there. Mostly focused on six and seven, but there are even <laughs> we're almost done with chapter one. Would, would claim to be believers of God, yeah. but part of the issue, in addition to the idols, is the oppression that the spiritual leaders and others are doing, and doing so as though they have the authority of God, and so hmm. they have made a God. God doesn't like themselves that. or a God of wealth and. And that's what, and not because it's interesting because the fact that it references, uh, here we go. I'm going to, I'm going to jump ahead to two. I'm allowed to do that. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Woe to those who devise wickedness and mm. work evil on their beds. When mm. the morning dawns, they perform it because it is in the power of their hand. They covet fields and seize them and houses and take them away. They oppress a man and his house, a man and his inheritance. Slaves. So, well, in this case, I don't think, I don't know that. It, I don't see anything. Does it say slaves in your No, hotel? I got a little side note <laughs> yeah. here that uh, their inheritance is slaves. I mean, because that is part of their inheritance in, in some instances in the Bible. All right. Mine, mine doesn't have it, but hotel and NIV, I'm a, <laughs> we can roll with that. But here's what's interesting. Even if it does say that, hmm. what's interesting here is that God's offense here well, isn't that yeah. he's saying, uh, I told you not to do this and you're doing it. So you're disobeying me. It seems here that his uh, gripe with them uh -huh. is that people are being oppressed. Uh, you know, somebody's let's, inheritance, let's, let's their again. land, let's, let's their figure house. That out. Woe to yeah. those who plan iniquity, to those who plot evil on their beds. At morning's light, they carry it out because it is in their power to do so. They covet fields and seize them. Now, if we, we go back to 
mm-hmm. verse 15 or 115 here, it says, I will bring a conqueror against you. And and would that conqueror not be the same person who covets their fields and steals them? So from my understanding, the reference he's making here is the people that are coveting and seizing. Uh, and some of these cases are the people that are saying that they are the people of God. And he talks throughout uh-huh. Micah of another nation coming and bringing the oppression. Uh, was it Babylon or Syria? Yeah, yeah he brings, uh, well, I will bring conquerors against you. So, I mean, he, mm-hmm. he God brings them against them. Um, the very next verse there, uh, 2, 3, it says, I am planning disaster against this people from which you cannot save yourself. Yeah, therefore, um, thus says the Lord, behold, in against Habakkuk this family, I am thing. devising disaster from which you cannot remove your necks, and you shall not walk haughtily, for it yeah. will be a time of disaster. In that Thanks day, God. they shall take up a taunt <laughs> song against you and moan bitterly. Yeah? yeah? Yeah. This is heavy stuff. So because they were having other idols, and because they, I'm still not seeing the, um, the well, I guess because yeah, you the said some so of them. They, they, uh, the houses and the They covet man fields and, and seize them and houses and take them away. So is that they all of them, them or some of them? So, so from my understanding, what was happening is there Those. is hmm. your inheritance your uh your house your land your family land uh there, that was a a cultural understanding that your family lineage was important in that family land yeah. there was uh a i mean the law was built around protecting that it's um yeah. what is it ruth uh or somewhere yeah. where it talks about there's there's somebody that when they when they died it effort was made to find the next of kin the family because you know, I think it was rude. Now, I think you're right on that one. Yeah. Nowadays, it's like land is land and it, people aren't really too attached to it for the most part. Like, but well, then yeah. it was you are building a legacy, your generation. Yeah. So when somebody comes in and oppresses someone and then it says uh, seizes their houses, covets their field and seizes them out from under them. There, it was basically an immense injustice that was happening to people who whether it was because of their income level or their power level, didn't have the ability to stop it. So it is an immense injustice for somebody to come and take their house. In this so cultural when that context, happens, when, you're, yeah. when you swoop in and take what is somebody else's in yeah. general, but also something that is supposed to represent a continued lineage, a continued inheritance, yeah. then it was a high level of dishonor beyond just like, oh, I lost this property. Yeah. So, I mean, my thing is though, you know, there, this thing is happening where there's people coming in and taking their houses. Mm-hmm. So God's going to come in and bring people that are going to come and take their houses. So that's his punishment is the same thing that from, he thinks is ab- abhorrent and, and deserves so, punishment. He's so from do. the people, so from the people, so the, and again, this is, I feel like the big issue here is that these are people who have said that they are honoring God, that they represent God. Yeah. Um, so that's okay. So no, no, no. So that's, that is an immense issue. Like they have been given somebody, if, if somebody believes in God, again, we're working in this context where, of course, yeah, we're working in that God context. Exists, this is real. It happens. There I'm is trying a to God make sense of it. And, and there's a, another passage that talks about how God releases authority to those in power to, mm. to do justice and to do right. Well, so he also somebody, releases bad guys to take houses and and, and that are not their so own. Habakkuk, he's he does not the same necessarily. Thing, yeah. yeah. So, but what I'm saying is, he has given them this. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, responsibility. So, not just a power and authority, but a responsibility, and they are taking advantage of it for their own gain and at the expense of others. So, so take all their houses. Are, so are you so are you ready to jump to six? Because I don't want yeah, to spend do too let's much. Let's do it. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Because, this is great. That was a great context. You jumped to three. You went because this there, is buddy. important. Like <laughs> because you and I could like we could keep on going because yeah. two and three does this thing where like God gets really heavy about this is the wrong that you have committed. Mm. Uh and oh here, wait, woo. Um, oh, this is this is good. I was scrolling There's up. One so, five. They were sinful, worshiping other gods and had prostitutes. And then three, and I said, hear you heads of Jacob and rulers of the house of Israel, right? Um, Mm -hmm. So this is, this is a good for what I was just saying. Is it not for you to know justice? You who hate the good and love the evil, who tear Mm -hmm. the skin from off my people and their flesh from off their bones, who eat the flesh of my people and flay their skin from off them and break their bones in pieces and chop them up like meat in a pot, like flesh in a cauldron, man, 
<laughs> some people don't realize the Bible's got some crazy stuff in it. But <laughs> for sure. he's talking to like, this is the thing that hits me is he's talking to the heads of Jacob, the mm. rulers of the house of Israel. And again, he says, is it not for you to know justice? Instead, they're doing this awful, like all stuff. Now, again, we're talking figurative language. They're probably well, not actually flaying skin. Well, and chopping even them if they like, were, I mean, the Israelites but, are doing bad things. The, the well, people around them, them are doing bad things. That's that, the mean, people just... who are doing it, though. It's the heads of Jacob and the ruler of the house. They're the ones that are seizing the land. They're the ones that are oppressing people. The people, it says in verse four, they will cry to the Lord. Um, and if we keep on going, basically, this is what you're seeing is a people who are oppressed that are crying out. And others who feel like we're going to do what we want and we can, we're, we don't, we, we don't answer to that God. We answer right. to our gods and we feel like our gods are saying it's okay. So there's this pride. So, would this you say arrogance. it's about 50, 50, you got the 50% of them that don't give a crap about God and then 50% of them that are crying out to God or is it 25%? Oh, I don't know. I, I don't mean, know like the percentages. And honestly, sometimes it seems like that 1%. percentage is, is pretty low or maybe put a better way. You know, in any given situation, sometimes you have a small amount of voices that are really loud on this end and a small amount of voices that are really loud on this end. And then a whole lot of voices that aren't as loud and they're trying to figure out where they stand or they kind of quietly be in that place. You think of politics. Some people are really, really vocal. Right. right. But if we took the whole, you know, uh, cross section of the nation, it would probably just be a small percentage on each end that's the most vocal and then a whole lot of people that maybe they have strong feelings but they're not as vocal it could be like that here that there are people that are oppressing and it's maybe it's not a huge crowd but it's people in power oppressing and then you might only have a few voices like micah that are actually like seeking god and hearing from god which is why someone like micah exists because if everyone had that relationship like micah had then they wouldn't need a Micah to tell them what God's saying necessarily, right? Why and would so, God only do be able to talk to Micah? Why can't God talk directly to other people like he did with Micah? Well, and he could, but part of it is, uh, I, <laughs> and you'll appreciate this because you're a father. Uh, I was with some friends today and we were talking about <laughs> our kids. Uh, we're trying to watch some show and the mm -hmm. adults finally had this opportunity to play a game together, uh, Sellers to Catan. I don't know if you played oh, it. Oh, I haven't you know. played it yet, but it's on the list. It's, so we were playing it and we're laughing and joking. And the kids keep quiet down. Y'all are too loud. And we're like, y'all are loud around us all the time. But then when we try to, say, and I, we didn't say this to them, but we're like, when yeah. we try to say something to them, some of they can't hear us. And mm. as a parent, like you've mm. experienced that mm. where you're saying something to your child daily and they just they can't hear it. <laughs> and sometimes it's because they don't want to listen. So mm. I imagine the people who are oppressing, they're in that boat. They, they don't want to listen, listen. God, right? Like it, they are actively choosing to ignore God. So and I think do, others are like my daughter who like, she's just so focused on whatever she's doing. Like the ears just aren't working. Scripture yeah. talks about let those with ears to hear, let them hear. Jesus spoke to crowds of people and mm -hmm. it was amazing how different those experiences were. Some of them like got it, got the depth of, you know, he'd tell a parable and they're like, oh, that was more than a story. There was a spiritual truth in there. Hmm. Some of them, like the disciples were listening and they're like, okay, I hear what you're saying. I don't understand. And then there are a lot of people who just went right over their head. Well, or how do you the, think uh, it works for me though? I mean, because, well, I mean, sidetrack for a second here. Yeah, yeah. How do you think it works for me? Do, 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 do you think God is trying to talk to me and I'm just not listening or I can't hear it or how's yeah, it, man. How, how I do you was, think that works? I was thinking about you um, this week. I was listening to some episode. Mm -hmm. Oh, is uh, um, the the guys that were wearing black and white, the two guys. Oh, the, the, yeah, the, the, good guys, good guys, trying to save me. Yeah. Um, and it came up in the conversation. You mentioned to them, like I've tried, mm -hmm. I, I've I've asked God to speak. To Been me. there, yeah. And and I was thinking about you, Michael, because I imagine I haven't listened to all two hundred you know, 50, 60, 70, Someone, I don't know whatever. where you are. You, I haven't listened to all of them. I've listened to a good chunk, but not all of them. But I imagine mm -hmm. there have been people who have just assumed you never tried to hear from God. Mm -hmm. I, I imagine there have been people that just assumed you were doing it wrong. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I imagine you have people that um, assume that you weren't uh, authentic about it or you mm -hmm. weren't really like being genuine. Like, yep. I imagine you've gotten all that. Here's the thing, Michael. I'm not in your head. Right? No, yeah. Like I can't answer that for you, but here's what that. makes it even harder is what you have communicated is, mm. and I, and I can 
I can choose to take you at your word. You've communicated mm. that you have, you have tried to communicate to God mm. and you have not heard it. Mm. It is not for me to decide why you haven't heard it, or maybe you did, but you didn't notice it. Um, but I think what makes it even harder is there are plenty of times where there might be silence, right? Uh, mm. Some people talk about, and I was going to look it up and I, and I didn't, but I've heard people talk about there being 400 years uh, where God didn't speak uh, between the Old oh. Testament and New Testament. I don't know if, I, I need to find a biblical backlink if, it's, <laughs> if that's true, because maybe just it wasn't recorded. Yeah. But there are plenty of times, mm. um, even in my life, where I felt like there was silence when I wanted it to be overt. And so, so I say that to say, Someone could say that the fact that, okay, let's say Michael did reach out to God and he didn't hear, they would say, well, therefore, since Michael didn't hear, it's because of this, this, and this. Well, it could also- It's usually my fault, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it, was, yeah. It, it pins down on you, whether it was intentional or not, but it could also be because the answer hasn't come yet, right? Mm. Like, and so, so that, mm. you know, I can't give you a, a broad yeah. sweep answer because you're a human being who's nuanced. <laughs> the I don't know is- Paul, you know I love those I don't know. Oh, I know you know that. I love that I don't know. <laughs> Thank and, you for that sidetrack. You know, a little bit. Yeah. Well, another sidetrack. Side another side. I thought. Yeah. <laughs> have you been watching? Um. Uh. What is it? Uh. Monarch Legacy of Monsters or oh. something like that. It's on Apple. It's a uh, uh, a little bit. I I, I usually okay. like. Yeah. 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 yeah and again, yeah. we're not going to get into Godzilla. Yeah. This is yeah. Yeah. But um, there, there's a moment in there. I thought of you because uh, there's uh. A, a, a guy who's in the army and two scientists and the there's a scientist that you know is asking the guy a question in the army and and he's like trying to give some answer and she's like you know i just one thing i love about children is they they accept that there are things that they don't know and then she asked another question and the other scientist walks in and says oh man i don't know and she just smiles and i was like michael, <laughs> michael knows about this i don't know his power <laughs> i love it i love it <laughs> and so all right we were we were working our way to six <laughs> working we our way working to six i do want to stop by at four real quick while we're here all right stop by at four we're we're, we're getting there folks 4. i know you came 5. here for six and seven it's kind of no I know. Oh, patient, guys. Patient. <laughs> uh, all the nations may walk in the name of their gods. We will walk in the name of the Lord, our mm -hmm. God, forever and ever. Mm -hmm. But, oh, sorry, back up a little bit there. For the Lord Almighty has spoken uh, is part of this. But, like, so why does it say all the nations may walk in the name of their gods? Mm -hmm. Apparently they can't because God steps in and says, no, you can't do that. I'm going to slaughter you now. Because you well, were... and part of this, he's talking to the nation that had said we mm -hmm. we that had made a covenant with mm -hmm. God, I and mean, they made a promise all the way back in Abraham. They made a covenant, said, uh, "You are our God, and we are your people." Right. And, and then they kind of pull out from that covenant. Yes. And they get into some trouble. The thing. And then God say they cry to God. God saves them and reinstitutes that co covenant. All right. Yeah. And listen, why is it let, saying they can all walk in their own name of their so, own gods? So, yeah. so it sounds like, and this is, again, if we would have to, I didn't go deep into one through four recently. Mm -hmm. in yeah, no, I just of, highlighted you know, We were going to go to six and seven. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so I'd have to go deeper into it to yeah. remember at which parts it's talking to. Are you saying you don't know? Oh, I don't. I don't. Oh, I'm not the scholar. I love it. The theologian. But, um, <laughs> but it could be here for all the peoples. Yeah. It could be talking about of the world. In fact, hmm. let me uh, click the T here. I've oh, got it. Go. I got. Uh, see, I've got the digital version. Fancy, and and it's giving me a uh, that it, it's not clickable. Tea. It's yeah. it's lying. It's lying to yeah, me. Mine Michael. doesn't have that option. All right. For some reason, it's not. Let me pull up the note that would tell me what all the peoples are. We'll save that. It for could next be that's time. talking about all the peoples of the world, and <laughs> that you know, like you mentioned, a lot of people believed in a lot of different gods, and it's saying hmm. all the peoples walk each in the name of its god, but we talking about the nation of Israel. We mm. will walk in the name of the Lord, our God, forever mm. and ever. Now, here's the thing. You and I had mentioned that there is some back and forth. And so what we haven't noted mm. in one through four, like we've noted the, the destruction, the wrath, but mixed into these are moments where it almost seems like a contradiction, where God is yeah. giving promises, where God is yeah. affirming. And this is something that we see really starkly by the time we get to seven, uh, a, a big shift from what it seems yeah. like we read in one because one comes out the gate, God's mad at you and he's going to destroy you. Seven <laughs> ends. I'm in naked. The opposite way, right? 
<laughs> <It's>, <laughs> right. That's going to be a clip uh, later. Oh, God. <laughs> hey, <laughs> uh, and so, again, if we're going into this as a, a Bible study, a book study, we have to ask, how is it possible hmm. for, and in fact, let's let's give the spoiler. Let's not keep it from the people. Yeah. At the very end, this is how all of it ends. So we read verse one, and it's, yes. and it's rough. It's intense. And then we get to 718. 718. Who is a God like you, pardoning iniquity and passing over transgression for the remnant of his inheritance? He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in steadfast love. Hmm. He will again have compassion on us. He will tread our iniquities underfoot. You will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. You will show faithfulness to Jacob and steadfast love to Abraham as you have sworn to our fathers from the days of old. Now, if you had those two passages hmm. without scriptural references, nobody, unless they've read them, would say these are in the same book, much less within the same seven chapters. And yet, somehow to Micah, this makes sense. He, he is saying these words in chapter one and chapter seven and not batting an eye. Like some, for some reason, it clicks for him that this can actually coexist. This like coming down and everything melting like wax and this God who delights in steadfast love, has compassion. That will Does cast. he though? Like I, I, these are just words, but let's look at his actions though, Paul. His actions are different. I mean, we can even go to John three thirty. Uh, yeah, John three thirty six. He always anger remains on non-believers. He says, uh, "Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on them." That doesn't sound like mercy, forgiveness, and loving and. Uh, was it verse uh, 18 you do not stay angry forever but mm -hmm. delight to show mercy that doesn't sound like delighting yeah. to show mercy and and you're not wrong and this is where last in our last conversation i talked about part of the way i process things is really it comes down to what is our starting point what is our foundation what is our grounding what is our agenda yeah. like all these yeah. things you start off um, from the love and this is how well, he's a perfect even, i mean awesome... so or but even stepping back from that one of my starting points in life is saying there's a lot I don't know, right? Ah. And so therefore, because there are things that I don't know, hmm. when I approach something that doesn't make sense to me, there is hmm. an area that I need to be open to the reality that there may be something that I don't know that hmm. bridges this together, right? We talked about in that conversation how there's a lot of times that my kids have decided that I am not loving because hmm. based on their experience and based on what they're seeing, Dad is doing things that are not loving. Now, what they didn't know is that I actually love them deeply, right? And we went into, but you've never drowned your children. And, you know, and right. Like, well, we, we go to verse, we just go right back to verse uh, five here. The Lord mm -hmm. declares that I will destroy your horses from among you uh, and demolish your chariots. I will destroy the cities, your land and tear down all your strongholds. I will mm -hmm. destroy your witchcraft. That's funny. <laughs> He's going to destroy witchcraft. <laughs> I will destroy your, your sacred stones and your crowded images i will uproot you blah 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 blah. Yeah. so that's we don't do that to our kids right and so then the that's question different. then is left how then can this be love how can these things work so that's why yeah. for me because how is that mercy point, and compassion how is that showing mercy and compassion so and i think let's look at six because i think that's where we start to see yeah, the answer let's do it. um i'm gonna read let me, I'll, I'll start reading six. And then if yeah, I six, one, plead my case. Why does Yahweh need someone to plead the case for him? <laughs> but <laughs> Why can't Yahweh again, just plead his own case? <laughs> it's, it's figurative. You know, it's not an actual trial that like, you know, it says here for the people that are like, what y'all talking about? Oh, Hear okay, what the Lord says. Mm -hmm. Arise, plead your case before the mountains and let the hills hear your voice. So right now, Micah's telling everyone, look, Plead your case before the mountains and let, or is he saying, oh, he's saying it to God, arise, plead your case before the mountains and let the hills hear your voice. And then he says to the mountains, hear you mountains, them, yeah. the indictment of the Lord and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has an indictment against his people and he will contend with Israel. So again, his big issue is with them. And then we get into what God says. Now there isn't an actual trial, right? Where suddenly the mountains get into the jury box and the foothills and the foundations, and then God Not shows up out of his though. floating temple. And right, like, but it's like this figurative idea of like basically, uh, there was a covenant, 
And anytime there is a covenant, right, uh, a mm -hmm. contract, uh, mm -hmm. especially like nowadays, if there's a contract and there's a breach of contract, you go to court so that it can be objectively put on the table. Right. Here's what is happening. So that's God is figuratively saying, like, look, there is actually something objective here. And here's what he it says. Oh, my hurt. people, what have I done to you? How have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. Oh, my people, remember what Balak, king of Moab, devised and what Balaam, the son of Beor, answered him. And what happened from Shittim to Galgal, that you may know the righteous acts of the Lord. And so... And so this is one thing, and I, and I heard you just say it, uh, that it could be taken as like, well, did God get his feelings hurt? Yeah, very <laughs> much so. Very, and, he sounds very wounded. And, <laughs> and, I, and I could see why you would take it that I don't read it like that. And almost like, honestly, if I take it within the context of Micah, I would read it based on what, is, what we see at the end there, where it's talking about uh, his love and his compassion. Like if we right. imagine that that is Look true, what I did that, for you. Why don't you love right. me? And but but not like like a hurt kind of thing, but basically saying like I actually care about you. I I made covenant with you, and I held my end of it. Hmm. So why is it that you have chosen to break covenant? Is it because of something I did? Because realistically, I don't think that that's what's going on. Because look at what happened here and what happened here. So why is it that you have decided to break covenant? Um, so. This is hmm. where we get into part of the answer to your question. Oh, go ahead. Six, seven. No, go ahead. Yeah, no, I love it. go ahead. Yeah, six. Where are we going? Yeah, six, seven. So he's basically said, like, we had a covenant. So uh, stand up and speak for yourself. Like, why is it that you've broken this covenant? And then uh, right yeah. here, six, I, I don't know if it's, I think this is what the people answer. This is, yeah. Will the Lord be pleased so, with thousands yeah. of rams, with 10,000 rivers of oil? Mm -hmm. Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, mm -hmm. the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? Yeah. Yeah. Like, and that's I'll read my version man. just in case it's different. I don't yeah. think it's too different. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with 10,000 of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression? the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul. So basically they're saying, okay, like mm -hmm. what, what do I need to do to make this right? Mm -hmm. I mean, would you want rams? Cool. You, I mean, you want oil? Well, you why is he offering those born? things to God? Yeah. Why is he offering those things I, to and God? It, for me, it almost sounds like a, a desperation either or- but Because these are the kinds accusation. of things that God accepts. Or, but, and this is, and, and this is what we're going to see. I would dare say that it's not necessarily what God wanted from them, but what they understood they, this is what he's wanted they in the lived past, in culture though. but they this is part of what they wanted things to look like i'll give you an example hmm. so uh early on god told them look you don't need a king you don't need a king because i will be your god and i will care yeah. for you and the people said uh I, we don't feel good about that because everyone else has a king. He wasn't so doing a great if, job. If they look I mean... at us <laughs> and see that we don't have the king, they're going to think we're weak. But or or mm. what if we don't have a king and something happens and they kept on pushing like they? And God, God says, like, "Too bad, I'm king. God. I know best." Well, right? and I would, but actually, the what he ends up saying is he gives them what they want. We see it in like Romans eight or something well, like why that. Why doesn't he allow them to worship other gods then? If he's if he's so like lenient on the fine, I'll give you a king. Why isn't he like fine? You can well, have an Asherah pole or two. I mean, not a big deal. I understand it's not a real thing. Yeah, I'm and, the real god. I'm not going to be butt hurt. And it. in a way, he does because he could outright stop them from the start. But what he does is he releases them. He tells them, "Look, this is not going to save you. You don't need this. This is going to lead to your destruction. Outside of my safety, you're going to find harm. Hmm. So if you keep this it's covenant, caused by him though, the me, harm is him." He is the but harm. He is the one that actually knocks. in this case, <laughs> what we find is some of the harm that they experience is from within that they themselves start to say, you know what? I want some more land. You know, mm. I want, I want to take this person's inheritance. That's and so, other yes. times it's because there are times in scripture where they didn't uh, trust God and went off on their own and they got conquered, not because God conquered them or let them get conquered. It's because they went out of a safety. So in this case, 
Hmm. I start to wonder if perhaps, because I was thinking about this, like you've shared on the show, there's many times where there are passages that talk about sacrifice. There's a whole hmm. framework around, okay, here's here's what you do with the lamb and here's what type of lamb. Hmm. And I started to wonder I love if the when wave I read one. this one. Are you waving oh, yeah. God? <laughs> wave offering. <laughs> yeah. Like in the uh, stadium. Uh, but that's what's striking about verse eight. Hmm. Because verse without eight. verse eight, it, it would seem like, well, yeah, didn't didn't God say they needed to sacrifice stuff like that? And he has shown them what and, is good. Yeah. So here it is. They're saying, okay, well, what is the normal way to appease a God? All right. Yeah. This, 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 and this. And then God says to him, or what Micah is saying in reference to God, hmm. he has told you, oh man, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. That's not what he and was so, saying in Joshua. It's, huh? That's not what he was saying in Joshua. He was saying, slaughter, kill those people. They're on your land. They're on my land. That doesn't sound like uh, to act justly. To justly and, to and love, love kindness. And mercy. Yeah. And yeah. and this is some it's of the hard opposite tension of what's, that I what's wrestle with. The actions are. See, I'm seeing words, and I talk to the kids about this all the time. Make your words mm -hmm. match your actions, mm -hmm. and this is not happening here. His yeah. actions are brutal. And and, and, and and honestly, what makes it hard for you and I is that hmm. all we have to go off of here are these written words. Like we, yeah, book we are not. <laughs> we have not been there. We were not there, right? We are not yeah. experiencing it or seeing it. And and ooh, mm. oh man, mm. uh, it's kind of like. Uh, so I've been navigating a hard situation uh, hmm. that involves a lot of people, but there's been different types of correspondence. And I've been really struck by, I've been working on a public statement for, for something. And we've talked a lot about the importance hmm. of words because uh, what you say can be taken a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, and somebody received a message from somebody that on text that when they were sharing it with me, because it was a hard situation, we're all navigating they felt like the person was being short with them or was angry mm -hmm. with them. But as they told me what the words were, I was like, it could be that. And I see why you could think that. It could also be that it was just a quick response. There may not be anger in it. And so this is the hard thing about mm -hmm. text being all we have to go off of because we don't know Vengeance. when there may be nuances or we don't know when it may be more, um, gosh, that word is still evading me, but um, <laughs> uh, figurative language figurative versus language, yeah. literal language. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know when, uh, in this case, a lot mm -hmm. of this is not necessarily stuff that actually came to be, right? Or sometimes mm -hmm. there are things that God is saying, but the way that it is conveyed here, and maybe mm -hmm. be the words that he used, could have been understanding that time, not as a threat from God, but God basically naming outside of my presence, this is what will happen. And so you and I are stuck trying to make sense of this because again, as you noted, mm -hmm. rightly, it can seem contradictory. How can it say justice and kindness when it seemed like God told people to do things that seemed unjust and unkind mm -hmm. to these other people? Do they not matter? Verse 515, uh, I will take vengeance in anger. Sorry, yeah, just highlight it. Just look at it. Uh, maybe the Lord took me there. I will take vengeance in anger and wrath. You're sorry, hearing from a Michael. Help, this is sorry. the moment. <laughs> that was bad. I'm sorry. I take that back. Uh, hey, I will well, take vengeance in know. anger God and wrath. Through a donkey, and you're better than a donkey. So well, I don't know about that. Uh, <laughs> you're better than a donkey, that. Michael. Come on, man. Damn it, Paul. <laughs> I will take vengeance and anger and wrath upon the nations that mm -hmm. have not obeyed me. That's a mm -hmm. tough one. That's a tough it one. It is. And I will honestly, take vengeance and anger and wrath upon yeah. the nations that have not obeyed me. Yeah. I mean, these are harsh words and, that we and can't look, take any other this way. This is why I, why I love this type of conversation. And I yeah. affirmed your podcast last time because honestly, mm. most Christians struggle to know what to do with this. I don't know a Christian that doesn't struggle mm -hmm. with this because what you're saying is legitimate. Like, how mm -hmm. do we make this stuff work? The, the, the unfortunate thing is, is what a lot of Christians will do is they will just take Micah 6, 8, mm -hmm. or they will just take yeah. Micah 7, uh, 18 through 20. And mm -hmm. that's what they will hold on to. And they will not touch one, <laughs> hmm. they will not touch the parts of two, three, and four that are not the promises of restoration. Hmm. Hmm. And if we do that, 
uh, we are in a way dishonoring God because we're choosing not to acknowledge whatever this other part is. Now, to be fair- The good parts. Well, we choose to acknowledge the parts that we decide are bad or not appealing. Well, we can both decide that, agree that I will take vengeance in anger and wrath upon nations that have not obeyed me. We can both agree that doesn't sound very good. And and what I would go to, and this has been a, a, a response you've heard often, that- <laughs> That it, it, I could understand why, like, if a God, if God doesn't exist, it seems like a cop out. But if God mm -hmm. does exist, in the context of this Bible study, mm -hmm. Micah says that mm -hmm. God exists. Mm -hmm. And if God created all things and created the universe, then there is a level of authority that a creator has. Mm -hmm. uh, as one passage puts it, you know, the, the potter can choose to do what it will with its creation. Now, right. what's hard and, for you and yeah. I is we're like, but we're the creation. <laughs> like we're, we're the I can choose whether what's so, good or bad, right? I mean, I can choose whether this action is good or this right. action is and bad. And for us, it yeah. feels bad, especially. It, and then here's where I, here's here's one thing that I was thinking about earlier, especially yeah. when it feels like we could be on the bad end of it, or we could do but, better. But because here's the thing: is like, I'm just saying, I I don't think like when I read this and I and I read all these condemnations and the the anger and the pronouncements of what will happen hmm. i i i do not get the impression that it's talking to someone like you who has said like i'm agnostic agnostic atheist i don't believe in this god that you're talking about hmm. i don't this micah isn't uh micah isn't talking to you right micah's talking to where was it that i found it uh in uh, four at the beginning of four uh, so, yeah. somewhere where it was basically saying the house of Jacob, <laughs> like the, the people who claimed mm. to love me uh, yeah. and I'm, I'm stalling, but you know what I'm yeah, talking so about. Again, I, again, we so, just go back so to him he's being talking a to the and... people who are supposed to be representatives of God and have been given power to represent God and to provide for the people to like, God was both protecting and providing for them from himself and like, you know, the rain and the crops, we see it in really direct ways, like manna and all that and other parts of scripture. But he has also chosen to, to work through people throughout scripture. He chooses to work through people. Hmm. And these people who were given that honor, but also that responsibility, uh, took advantage of it for their own gain. That's hmm. who the pronouncements are against. And Micah, not anybody who didn't believe in God. It's the people who are saying, I believe in God and I'm going to do what I want. So it really hurts his feelings when, when it's those kinds of people. And again, I wouldn't even say that it's a hurt feelings thing because what you find throughout this is who he's advocating for. And again, this is why six, eight is so important. Hmm. He is advocating in a large part for his creation, for his people. Uh, so again, hmm. he is, he has shown you oh man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you? This is where he says, yeah, he's one of his shown requirements what is good. Is, justice how how has and he shown kindness. what is good though paul what has he shown what what has he shown and where has he yeah. shown it so if we jump back one of the places that he references that he says oh people remember what balaam what balak king of moab devised and what balaam the son of beor answered him so at the time hmm. uh, the israelites were in a vulnerable space um, as they were traveling to the promised land and balak king of moab saw them Mm -hmm. And he got nervous. And he's like, there's a lot of them there. And I, I'm afraid that if we don't do something, they're actually going to eventually overcome us. So mm -hmm. we want to do something here. And what they did is they actually, he went to Balaam because he heard through the grapevine that Balaam had some kind of a connection with God and could curse people. And whoever Balaam cursed, they were cursed. And so they sent out for Balaam and said, hey, we want you to curse the Israelites. And Balaam said, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask God about this. And God told him no. <laughs> and he's like, sorry, go tell your king I can't do it. And king like insisted, I want you to do this. And this is another example of someone who had, I don't know what his, the nature of his relationship with God was, but he, was, he had some level of power and authority. Hmm. And he decided to seek his own self-preservation, his own self-advancement, instead of honoring God. And this is where you get the whole donkey thing that we referenced yeah. earlier. That God actually spoke through a donkey. But that was a moment where God protected the Israelites from someone who tried to use God against them. 
didn't succeed. And then it says, and it doesn't tell us what it is, but it talks about Shittim to Gagal. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing either of those right. It didn't sound right. <laughs> it sounded wrong. <laughs> but uh, but from I've heard different things about what that reference is. Hmm. But one of the things that I've heard is it's referencing their journey to the promised land, which would include things like, um, I think there's, this was probably after the parting of the, the Red Sea, but it included things like um, the, the manna, that showed up when they needed food, water that showed up when they needed water, yeah, quail mean, that he, showed up, he, and then protection sent food, from he other sends armies. Conquerors. I mean, he sends he sends yeah. people to assault their wives. He sends crops that are growing. I mean, he sends good and bad, as far mm -hmm. as I see. Um, I just what I want to know is the yeah. good deeds that he's yeah. shown them. I mean, we're we're seeing bad things, drowning children, um, the Passover stuff like that. This is things he's showing yeah. them. And and when it says you've shown me good things, I don't see the good things that God has shown them. Mm -hmm. I see ridiculous punishments. And, I see over the top laws and this brings disobedient us... children, burning prostitutes. Sorry, I'm continuing on a track. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got a whole list, man. I know if I, I mean, let you, you could keep on going. It's a thing. Wrong. There are things in yeah. there that do not seem good. The that actions are of God. Justify the yeah. action, things that it says God did. Does or and so this brings done. us back to that question that I was asking earlier. In mm -hmm. the context of this book of scripture, Micah, Micah believes that there is a God mm -hmm. who says these things, mm -hmm. these hard things in chapter one, and also is somehow compassionate, forgiving, uh, right. loving. How faithful. does that work? And so was he angry and vengeful, but passionate and merc passionate? And so, and, so, and that's the and question merc because on a simple level, like that doesn't work. Reality. But the question and we're asked on, on a logical level that doesn't yeah. work. And yeah. so the question we're asking is within this context, though, somehow it does work. So how is it? What is it that Micah sees that I don't right now? Right. What is it that how Micah understands that I don't? Now, some of it, um, somebody was talking about this earlier. Oh, uh, I just hmm. recorded a guest for my podcast, and she worked with Wycliffe Bible translators for 40 years, uh, hmm. served in the Sudan for 20 years, was there during like civil wars and things wow. like that, like experienced some hard things. And I asked her, you know, I said, you've, you've done a lot that pertains to prayer and scripture, which are two things that Christians say are really important. Like hmm. in these decades and all you experienced, what is it that you've seen has shaped your understanding from what you used to believe to what you believe now. Mm. And her first answer was the sovereignty of God. Mm. And mm. what that stood, what stood out to me about that is this, and this is a hard one because sovereignty is not something that particularly in American culture, we have much experience with, or at least not much healthy experience with. <laughs> and throughout human history, there has been some really, really unhealthy yeah. uh, displays of sovereignty, but at its core, if we just take sovereignty at its core, in fact, Let's not just take it. Let's ask either Miriam Whipster or mm. <laughs> Oxford. Mm. Good idea. Uh, what what the definition of sovereignty is? I like that. Um, so the authority of a state to govern itself or another state, uh, supreme power or authority. Mm. There it is. Okay, supreme so supreme power, power or, authority. or authority. Now, let's. There are many ways that we could take that subjectively based on what we have or haven't experienced, what we've learned and heard, because supreme power, if we think of Hitler, sovereignty sounds bad, mm. right? Mm. Because he had this supreme power and authority and used it to do horrendous things. Ultimate power so we, cre creates the, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lost uh, it, it's gone. <laughs> but you and I, it was I know, there. I'm tracking with you. Damn. Again, you know, it's 11 where I am. It's not 11 where you are. So you have well, less excuse. But, yeah. don't you agree? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but if we take it objectively, let's just imagine hmm. that God does have supreme power and authority. That that it's not like a subjective thing, or it's like why should actually, I respect that supreme power it. and authority? Well, That's so if we, we have, have so if, yeah, if we have that starting point that He has that, okay. what does that mean? Okay. And if somebody by by definition, if somebody has supreme power and authority, then their decisions are the decisions that their right. actions. Why should are I respect those decisions, though? And then, and so that's the question because it comes down to who is the sovereignty. And so, in a case of a king, like the, this is why I was saying for us, it's different because we have presidents and sovereignty looks very different <laughs> in America. Um, but there well, are places that have a king. Yeah. And I mean, especially 
you know, generations ago, there was an understanding that the, what the king says goes. And yeah. sometimes if it was a bad king, it got very bad. This is what actually is referenced right. in Micah. There like were actually bad kings. You with Ahab, uh, not Odin. What was it? Death and destruction. <laughs> uh, some, some starts to know. But they, they did awful things, and people submitted to them because they understood you do not go against the king. What awful things did they do? You do not oppose do? the king. Uh, Ahab, oh, I'd have to pull it back up. Uh, it, it says they did detestable things. Like, did he kill people? The Lord. Um, I'm, or just worship other idols because God killed. thinks that's detestable. They had, they well. had other, yeah, they did have other idols. Yeah. That's, that's um, but it was though. way more like they did. I, I don't remember all of what they did, but it's, it describes it as being really awful. So mm. now, the reason that you would trust a sovereignty then would one be mm. because of your belief system that says, "I have I to, have to, I have to respect." So, like, this. if it's like a king, that's a robot. For some people, for some people, like they would, they would do that for the president. Whatever my president says, that's what. It, like, so there is there is a value system. Or I belief will system. obey. Right. <laughs> or two, because you don't have free will or control, like you mm -hmm. robot, mm -hmm. or you just think little of yourself or whatever, and you yeah. just kind of do whatever. Willfully or, ignorant. Or and, three yeah. uh, could be because of how you understand that entity or how you love that entity or how you value that entity. Um, and so sometimes mm -hmm. people will uh, submit to an authority because they trust that person. They value that person. They right. love that person. And so I would say for Micah, so right. we could ask the question of why, why is Micah trusting this sovereignty who is saying hard things and telling Micah to well, say the hard things? Well, because first off, it's saying things to him. There's a start. So, so yes, things. one, there is a, I mean, he is having a direct connection. And yep. yeah. Somehow he is, he's got a, a very real relationship with this sovereignty. He's, um, <laughs> yeah, two, he's, he's real... been invited to a level of, a deeper level of relationship than it seems the other people around. Mm. Um, three, like this is him saying it seven, like mm -hmm. this is how he talks about God. This isn't, and God told me to say about him. <laughs> like it yeah. was like, he is saying, who is the God like you? Like you pardon iniquity, you pass over transgression, like all this stuff, but, but people you did wrong. Like, really? but, but this is what he's saying. Yeah. He's saying God, it, but it's actually, God it's actually word, offers it. And so then the question to your point is, but we see that not happening. So why is that? So if God is sovereign and if he is loving, what what's did he lie or did hmm. something else happen and what i would venture to say is the reason that these prophecies existed was i would based off of micah out of god's love and compassion and commitment to the covenant hmm. he is saying you have continuously broken this covenant you have gone astray and i'm telling you one last time <laughs> like it you either need to come back yeah. into this covenant or you're you're choosing to go off on your own out of my protection, out of my safety, yeah. to your own devices, relying on your own strength and logic and understanding. But he only told this, this to is... Micah. So who he told it to Micah to tell other people because, naked. again, and who, who <laughs> dance around. Not naked. But he told it to Micah. <laughs> I'm not going to trust that guy, Paul. I'm just telling what, you. What God had, this doesn't mean that God didn't try to tell it to other people, but it could be that they uh -huh. were like my daughter who was so focused on what she was focused on that she didn't hear God. Or it could be like, <laughs> some of my kids when they're really mad they are overtly not listening to me yeah. and so when god would send prophets it's not because he didn't want to talk to others but sometimes it was his way of sending okay if you don't want to listen listen to a sovereign being here is a person like you Interesting. that is is saying these things and this is again mm. why what we see in jesus is that in in god coming in human flesh uh -huh. It was coming in a way that people could actually like, because this is something you said a lot. Like, why am I going to believe in an imaginary friend? Well, well suddenly yeah, there friend. is a physical being that is. I wasn't there things. for that though. That's the difference. You weren't there for that. Right. Right. No, exactly. Like, and that's why I'm not trying to. <laughs> he's still kind of imaginary friend at that point. Um, <laughs> there was something else I totally forgot. It's getting late. And it's I been know. a long week, but uh, thanks for bearing <laughs> it's with me. It's been a long 2024 so far. I, I, uh, <laughs> Um, I do want to get into the, the the free will aspect of it. God steps in. Um, I feel like God's stepping in here in Micah. Instead of giving these people free will to do whatever bad thing they're supposed to be able to do, God steps in and stops it. Well, so why, why does they, he do he, that? But he's, they've had, based on what you've just said, 
Hmm. They've actually had free will because he hasn't been stopping them their whole he lives. They should get free will throughout their whole lives. So, so like then the next else, point, so, some, so yes, he all. is still giving them a decision to make. Now, he, what you're it sounds like what you're saying, Micah, God is God through Micah is giving well, them. They don't know that. They're decision. just seeing a naked man howling like an owl. They don't. <laughs> but know. here's the thing: God is, is I, I think to me, like, come on, man. <laughs> I, I I would venture to say I think they do know because again, the the audience here hmm. isn't you. Who would be mm -hmm. saying, well, I, how am I going to believe your imaginary friend? The it's audience is people, people who right. know that God right. exists. Right. That grew and up does God it. usually and... speak through naked people? <laughs> you are on that. I'm just saying, that... like, this is a thing. Like, God, he, look, God look, knows look, that to, to a give, crazy man who's to, naked is to give God not credit, be believable. To give God credit, he didn't tell him to get naked. That was Micah's <laughs> reaction. So that's not on God. I mean, it's just, but, but, God knew. but also, also to your point, <laughs> Uh, John the Baptist, people struggle mm. with that. He wasn't going around naked, but um, he had furs on him. Yeah. And like, and I can't I remember, mean, um, all I can think over. of is, you know, for any of the, the, the Christians that are listening, your, your, your select few that, that chime in, I'm thinking, <laughs> of DC, I'm talking about D, thinking of DC talk. Cause they talked about John oh, great uh, with job. scabs right. on his back and hair on his face. They thought he was you crazed by the locust he ate. Uh, the Pharisees tripped when they heard him thing. speak. And so I the king that. took the head of this Jesus freak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, marmalade jelly and match yeah. my head to the, yeah, yeah, Okay, yeah. Mike, Michael, yeah, I totally dude, forgot. I, you I you were there, man. I forgot. Yeah. You I, I used up, to rock you, out to this song. I went dude, and saw dude. DC Talk live, man. D you were oh. down with the DC Talk. Oh, I loved down DC, with talk the DC Talk back talk. in the day. Yeah. That's a throwback to people. Know, you <laughs> know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. The OG album. So They changed a lot, man. Oh, we're terrible. We got stuff. The first and the last. But so, yeah, you're right. Like, John was sent to like pave the way for mm. Jesus. And like, he looked crazy. He looked like mm. a fool. Uh, here is Micah, who's so distraught mm. about what God's saying that he's stripping down and he's wailing. And now he, to be fair too, to Micah, like that wasn't mm. actually as strange for them as it was for us. Cause again, like wailing, gnashing of teeth, sackcloth, mm. ashes, like just, you know, th this, from my understanding, it seems like that was a normal response sometimes when mm. people were in deep grief. Uh, Job, like, just totally just yeah. tears Oof. his clothes and cuts. Right? So, like, yeah. so, <laughs> I was like I, when I say Job, Don't I go know there. I'm okay the reaction. I'm not going to go. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, so, why didn't? Why didn't uh, God send yeah. somebody who would go forth and be like, hello, I'm Micah? Or say something that me. he knew they would be receptive to because God knows exactly what it's going to take to convince and these people, but he didn't do it because, and this is, you were asking about the free will. That's the thing. Yeah. He could change their minds. He could say something to convince them or trick them. But what he is wanting here but, is, and here it comes, Michael. He doesn't want to. He, he wants authentic relationship, not forced relationship, not manipulated relationship. And so that's been the covenant from the start. The framework at the start mm. was, I, I am the God who created all these things, which means that I can control all these things. I can provide, I can create a reality that mm. is uh, life-giving and fulfilling and beautiful. But just not right now. And, and all it takes, well, not even that, all it takes is to remain in relationship. You have like, to love if me. You, not, not you have to love me, not, not like that. It's like outside of me, you will not find this. I will not force you to stay here. The story of the prodigal son, the father doesn't force the son. Like I will not force you to stay here, but I'm trying to get you to understand that outside of me, you will not be able to find this. It's not even a consequence. It's just a natural, like it's a natural consequence. And what happens at the start is Adam and Eve are like, oh man, this is amazing. And then at some point they're like, ah, but we don't want to be under a God. Like we want to be our, our own God. That's that was the so they were under their own gave. thing. They were under God and they were so loving it, and it they, wasn't enough for them. So they had to separate. So them. they they decided so God wasn't that enough. they wanted more. They felt like God wasn't enough. They huh. thought they could do better. That's what you see with the, the serpents. Like well, that's you, how I felt with Jesus. God, you could Jesus be like just wasn't God. enough, man. It wasn't there. He wasn't there for me. He never showed up my birthday, Paul. <laughs> All right, we're running late. Let's close but, this up. I do want to continue this, of course, another yeah, yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Another time. Well, we work because we're working up there. We yes. that, that after the fourth click, that's that's when we get our tickets. Are, are there but, any verses we left out that you haven't gotten to touch on that you wanted to before we close it out? You know, I I think I would say this: if we take Micah hmm. in its fullness, hmm. and we we step back and we say, let's just assume 
in this study that Micah was a real prophet who was really connected with God and his his understanding of God was accurate. Like, let's just assume that because that's that's the basis of how this book, if his understanding of God wasn't accurate, then this could be thrown out. Yeah, yeah, so if we assume that, yeah, then we're assuming it. in his understanding hmm. that this God can somehow be simultaneously loving and compassionate, yet also have the sovereignty and authority to show his wrath. And yet, and yet, and this is, I think, the important part and how I would close it out is hmm. again in that verse seven. It's almost like God, somebody could take these passages as God threatening. But I wonder, based on the end of this, if it wasn't threatening, and it's like a language barrier, or a culture barrier thing that like mm -hmm. how I read it is different than how it was understood. But it was more God saying, look, we made this covenant. You have chosen to oppress others. You have mm -hmm. chosen to reject me and take these gods that aren't even real. Uh, make your own gods. You have chosen to do all this. And I've mm -hmm. continuously tried to remind you. And I'm trying to remind you once more that that pathway only leads to destruction. And that if you turn from that pathway, I will, I will as it you. says, no, 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 no. Because this is what he's saying. Who is a God <laughs> like you pardoning iniquity? So their iniquity, God is saying, like, I'll pardon it. Passing over transgression. Yeah, you transgressed against, against me. If you return to me, I'll pass over it. Uh, he does not retain his anger. I'm angry. I'm, and if he is sovereign, then he's justified in his anger. But it's saying here that he chooses not to retain his anger forever, that he actually mm -hmm. wants uh, to, del he delights in steadfast love. He can have compassion. So, and then this part, you will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. So this is, this is kind of where Micah brings it. It's, it's this hard, hard book that's basically saying, Man, the wrath of God is intense. It melts mountains like, like wax. And I, if I'm not aware of the choices that I'm making, is this, is this what awaits me? But then Micah is saying, hold on, no, no, no. What awaits you is not a God who is just angry and wants to destroy. Not just. But a God who, is, who angry. You know, invites us to seek justice, love, kindness, uh, but who has compassion. Now, now. You know, bringing it back to you and I here and now, yeah. you've got tabs all in your Bible. I'm I know, <laughs> I get it. I've got passages that yeah, I get to. Find a place, though. We, we <laughs> talked about in our first, our first conversation on your podcast, I was yeah. reflecting on the flood and sharing how I was, it was like one, a, a time that it really hit me that I was like, man, I don't know how, to, how I feel about this, God. Like, all these people just, right? Like, mm. I totally track with you. Yeah. But the question is, what if? What if? What if God actually is sovereign? And what if he actually is loving? What if there is a possibility that we're missing something? And actually, I'll close in saying this. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're two guys that are wearing the black and the white. Um, <laughs> Y'all are talking about science. And one thing I thought was interesting that one of the guys said hmm. is that science isn't actually like hard and fast facts. It's, it, it is a process. The, mm -hmm. the, the core of science is it is how you see the world and engage the world. And it's the idea that you do it in an intentional way, that mm -hmm. you recognize this is how I think things are, but uh, how can I support that? How can I? How can uh, I prove that wrong? How can I prove that wrong? How exactly. can I? Like, yeah, both Science ways. is all about proving and yourself. The wrong, scientific method is out. all about a hypothesis, and then you test it. And so, what I do in my life is my hypothesis is that God is God and God is good. In my, in our first episode mm. of people want to know why I believe that I talk about it there. Go back there. Yeah. <laughs> you can go back to it. Messy love part one. Messy want love part one. <laughs> <laughs> this one won't be messy love part three because it's a whole different, <laughs> but who knows? Maybe you'll still do it. But my mm -hmm. hypothesis based on decades of uh, seeking God, wrestling with God, questioning God, experiencing hardships, experiencing, I would say miracles mm. and blessings have led me to, choose to consider this hypothesis that God could actually be God, powerful, and God could actually be good. And so when mm. I enter a text like Micah, mm. I'm looking at that hypothesis. Now, yeah. some people do it blindly. Some people do it because of obligation, but I'm choosing to do it um, authentically, saying like, if, I mean, if it's that hypothesis to you. is- Yes. Yes, I mean, to me, gonna, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. In my if process, gonna, if that is true, then how it, do though. I understand start... this and read it? But we gotta start from zero. Like, like, like we don't know whether this guy is good or bad. 
That's mm-hmm. where we should be starting. And we read these right. contexts and we read, I will take vengeance and anger and wrath mm-hmm. upon the nations that have not obeyed me. And then we read later on that his life or his, uh, he do not stay angry forever, but delight in mercy. Mm-hmm. But I'm sorry, what? <laughs> yeah. So I can't make and, a and we decision remember... about this guy being good because of the bad things he says and does. Yeah, but we got to remember sense. in Micah, these things have not been done. And that's one of the one of the key pieces. Like he hasn't yeah. done these things. Yeah, but I mean, um, elsewhere and, he has done such things. And we mm-hmm. and we didn't get into this, but mixed throughout these, often yeah. after it, yeah. is his way of uh, almost essentially saying, "This is what could happen. Here is what I am promising. Here is the restoration that could." Come. Right. These so, are my threats. And, and then we go to the back to the prodigal son. It, I like yeah, that you, you brought take that a, up. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, because what happened with the prodigal son when 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 the prodigal son left and and took everything, the dad didn't go. Well, now I have vengeance and my anger and I'm going to send you to hell. None of that. Yeah, we don't we don't yeah. see that in the text. We don't I mean, it's a it's a story. So right, it was like more it. of a loving but, response. And and mm-hmm. that's how I see that story as a loving response from a and loving this father. Does not, and this is not a loving, loving response. from a And, loving and honestly, part of it, too, and I'm not surprised for you, hmm. it would feel like that, because, again, your starting point is is not believing in this god right, right? My, so like well besides now, that my, i'm looking but, at the character but this and is i want to decipher because, whether this is the good guy or the bad guy right. in the story and i and i get that my starting point would be more in line with these people that they're talking to that have decided that they believe in god and yeah. so it's like um you know how i would talk to a kid you know in the mall might be one way that i don't know that kid or anything but if one of my kids um uh does something really awful like the way that I would talk would be with maybe more uh, Stern. sternness or more, more yes. seri- seriousness, right? Like, and you and I have Scowls. talked about, we, we, we try to be intentional on how we correct and love our children. Yeah. But to our kids, it's perceived as like cruel and harsh. And why are you talking? Sir? Like that kind of thing. Unless, unless they know that they've done wrong. And then oftentimes they recognize that it's justified. And that's the piece. Every like, time I threaten from, them with hellfire. From, <laughs> and again, we're we're talking about a scale and a scope. Like if you take our human relationships and we expand it to an eternal God, like the the it's going to look different. But what I'm yeah. saying is, these are people that knew God, knew the covenant, had recited the covenant, and had yeah. actively chosen to essentially spit in God's face. And so when He comes with that intensity and harshness, because He's upset, it wouldn't have been surprising to them because they would know, like, oh, I. It's like poking a hornet's nest. If you start to get stung, you're not surprised. Yeah. I'm not saying God is a hornet's God's nest, a hornet but I'm now. saying if you know you are <laughs> messing with something intense and powerful, hmm. you're not surprised when there's repercussions. But the thing we hmm. can't miss, and this is why that the closing is so important, hey. is that that, sh- that can that can shape how we then read hmm. chapter one. Because if I start at chapter one, oh my gosh, it's intense. Then I get to seven, I realize something new about the characteristic of God. And when I see the different promises and uh, promises for restoration and wholeness mm. and peace, like I start to say, wait, God isn't just wrathful and destructive and angry. There's something else here. Then I can go back and read it again with that new insight and then reread. Okay, well, how do I read this? Does, does that mean I'll get it and it'll click? I may still wrestle with it, but this is part of my scientific process, yeah. Yeah. right? No, you, hypothesis. Yeah. And this is why I talk with you. Because yeah. you don't just say, well, Paul, let's just look at Micah 6, 8 in the end. Let's just look at the good stuff. <laughs> look at the that. flowers. Let's look you at the flowers, push, Paul. <laughs> you push on my hypothesis. Uh, but my yeah. hypothesis is partly based on scripture, partly based on life experiences, partly based on the experiences of others. And, and I'm continuing to test that. I'm continuing. And for all that, 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 uh, that was our second episode, which is Messy Love Part 2. Messy so love go check that two. out. Uh, let's see. I don't even have it written that down, so I don't know what episode that is. Good luck, everybody. <laughs> in the 200s. Somewhere in the 200s. Oh, man. Paul, this has been a blast. Thank you so much. Yeah, I do man. love the Bible study part, man. This, and, and of course, having you on, you're always fun. Oh, uh, go ahead and plug well, the stuff. We can't, we, stop. Find you? we can't stop. Yeah, I know. So <laughs> if, anybody want, <laughs> if anyone wants to connect and, uh, and and talk more, like, again, my, my goal is to create authentic, accessible space. And my uh, the website is whereddidyouseegod.com. But it is not restrictive to just Christians. Michael has been on my show. He's not a Christian. <laughs> he he knew what Christianity was and decided I don't like what I see. And he and I had a great conversation because that's the idea is it's creating authentic, accessible space 
to process these hard questions. So there's yeah. a podcast, there's writings, but really, I just I just want to make myself available because yeah. this is confusing, this is hard, but I, I I like Micah have come to the place where I actually believe it. And if somebody wants to understand more of that, I'm happy to share why. Just keep your clothes on, Paul. All right. I will, and I will not wail like an ostrich. Maybe an owl. <laughs> or moan like an owl, whatever, moan however like you do that. I'm going to have to look that one up. Never mind. Don't look I that know, up. Look at look look uh, Hey, can you do me a favor? <laughs> yeah. Can you please, can you please get an audio clip of an ostrich and put it somewhere at the end of this episode <laughs> or in the midst of it? Just do that. Do that. I'll write folks. that down so I remember to do that. Okay. <laughs> All right, Paul. Thank you so much, man. We'll talk to you later. Always good talking to you, Michael. <laughs> That's all the show there is for you today. Thanks for listening. As always, you can find me at the Bible Says What YouTube and Facebook pages. You can also find clips of the show on TikTok under BSW the Podcast. If you like what you heard and want to help keep the recording light on, simply go to patreon.com forward slash BSW the Podcast and sign up to be a supporter of the show. Your episodic tithes of a dollar or more will get you early access to each episode by at least three days, stickers, shirts, and shout outs. That's patreon.com forward slash BSW the podcast. For the latest events, BSW swag, including signed copies of The Bible Says What the book, head on over to the show's ever evolving webpage at thebiblesayswhat.com. And no matter which platform you use to listen to your podcasts, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out on the next episode. Until then, would you kindly pick up your Bibles and read them? Next time on The Bible Says What? Well, I don't know. I don't know. That's an interesting one, but I, 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 I wouldn't go first thing to angels. That, that's just me, though. Um, yeah. Why did you go first thing to angels instead of anything I else? Didn't, I, didn't, I couldn't think of anything else it could be. Radio signals from space. And you picked them up on your fillings, and it went through your head. There except, you go. I got false teeth. except I got false teeth. There it is. It went through your false teeth. There it is. It went right through your false teeth. It's actually a, uh, a conduit for alien I signals. Have it.